Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new podcast where today we return with actually episode 118 of your favourite Formula 1 show. Knowing Wheel is back this time around ready to review the Spanish Grand Prix and I'm joined by a man that not only got the wrong week to go to uh, the race but also has completely got the wrong country as well. Jamie, how, how are we doing mate? I'm good. Uh, I'm not sure what race you're talking about to be honest but yeah this is the last time for a while that I'll be recording. Uh, in the same time zone as Matt, which is going to be fun next week. Um, yes, we'll wait and see where I where I turn up in the world next week. Uh, but yeah, excited to go through the race. It was actually quite good, surprisingly. Yes, yeah. I mean, obviously, Barcelona, of course, we did the pre-show last Friday. That was good fun. Um, of course, we, we sort of spoke about the track changes, what we kind of hoped would be the case, and a few other bits and pieces as well, of course. Um, so, of course, yeah, if, if you want to sort of know all about that kind of things, Go back, check out that pre-show, of course. But today, Jamie, it's a bit weird because we can kind of just jump straight in with the action, can't we? And I mean, free practice was fairly undramatic, wasn't it? You know, there was a little bit of rain uh, on Saturday morning, but nothing. You mean, you know, and a Logan Sergeant crash, just to and a Logan Sergeant crash, but that kind of wasn't too surprising, I no, suppose, not because really. rookie. Um, but yeah, let, let's just jump straight in then, Jamie. But I think what absolutely cannot be argued against the weirdest qualifying session we've had so far this year wasn't it oh definitely yeah and i was just i think it's because the green track wasn't it so it rained overnight and in the morning a little bit in barcelona and the track was just unbelievably slippery and no one kind of knew why um and no one even changed really like no one got used to it we saw debris have two spins in exactly the same place uh alonso went off immediately at the final corner um and quite like that kind of derailed his weekend almost didn't it and then yeah it was it was just bizarre everyone was kind of going into the gravel and eventually um i think it was albert was the nail in the coffin uh, went into the gravel and dragged a load of it back on the track so that was a red flag to sweep the track which i mean the cars are going to do it for you eventually but yeah yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we had a red flag for like four minutes in, didn't we? After, yeah. like you said, it felt like half the cars uh, on the on the circuit had fallen off at some point or another. And of course, you know, the the other big talking point was seeing Q one was that potential threat of rain uh, that could have been arriving onto the circuit as well. So of course, everyone is out there trying to get laps in desperately, uh, apart from Ferrari, of course. Still, <laughs> whether they just knew there wasn't actually going to be rain this time round, we, we we still don't really know, but. Um, yeah, Ferrari clearly didn't feel like they were under pressure, and they really should have, at, at least in the Charles Leclerc camp. He just could not find anything, could he? No pace no. at all. Nothing. It was it was bizarre, really. And it's like I saw people, obviously Leclerc fans on Twitter, were saying there's got to be something wrong with the car. Like there's no way because all through Friday practice he was comfortably quicker than Signs, and then just got to Saturday and he just completely lost it. And it was it was really weird because we didn't see that from Leclerc at all really um, especially on a Saturday but yeah he just wasn't at the races at all and eventually qualified P19 which is insanely low for a car that on paper should be in the top four teams quite easily well, um, let's not forget what three races ago it was that very same car that was on pole yeah yeah and obviously science was on the front row in, in Q3 so it was very strange I do wonder if they're going to make up that the car did have an issue just to cover Leclerc's back but if that if there was no issues, that's a really yeah poor poor show from uh, Leclerc. I um I mean I'm not a Leclerc fan, but I would be surprised if there wasn't anything yeah, wrong with that car. Similarly, to be honest. Yeah, I think there was something off with that Ferrari car that obviously you can only see once it goes for a full tear down back like a crack really chassis not. or something exactly that kind of thing was the impression i was getting for, for leclerc like you said obviously to fall off that much from friday to saturday without you know the only sort of logical reason why that happens normally is if a driver has a big crash or if it? they're and like then, of course doesn't. ill physically i guess yes yeah but for, for a driver to fall off that badly overnight for seemingly no reason doesn't quite add up to me but of course then you can ask the other question of well if he never crashed i did the chassis get i mean it's ferrari anything could happen <laughs> let's be fair yeah uh, they probably dropped been... it back <laughs> you know in ferrari yeah they like, try to move it around or something like that bizarre bizarre team and organization but as you said of course he was uh joined logan Sargent, a bit of a nightmare qualifying for him i think we all knew deep down didn't we 
Uh, this was going to be one of those weekends where pretty much everyone can fight for points apart from Williams. They were going to be a yeah. long way off. Um, so yeah. the player found himself in a Williams sandwich there with Magnussen and Bottas in mm. Q1. I know we've mentioned it before, but yeah, Bottas still... Again, this weekend, Joe Guan Yu just seemed to have a better on him, didn't he? Yes, music to my ears. I love that. And uh, really not great from Bottas at all. Um, and it's a track that generally, like certainly in the junior formulas, it's a track you kind of measure driver ability at because it's such yes. a like it's kind of like i think the last three years uh the f2 champion has won the feature race at barcelona there we go, Ollie Behrman. yeah it could be this year Saw as well it. who knows so it is a track which rewards well the drivers and the cars who are performing at their best level which is why pastor maldonado won his only race here so of course yeah <laughs> It was a, a a weird weird weekend for Bottas and kind of a weird season ever since Bahrain really. But yeah, 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 very up and down so far. I mean, it was the first time Joe Wan you had made it into Q two this year, though Bottas hadn't joined him, mm. uh, which was quite a surprise as well. But I mean, yeah, the real drama though Q two, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell colliding down the front straight. What well, as you know, as, as a non Mercedes fan <laughs> team, what did you make of that one? I just don't see like what happened. I, I, I don't really understand. So obviously he had a car, I think it was an Alpine coming slowly on the right-hand side. Ferrari. Right the way. Was it a Ferrari? It was Sainz, was it? Yeah, it was Sainz. Um, and you had Russell ahead who just finished a lap and Hamilton behind who was just starting a lap, I believe. And Russell just seemed completely unaware that Hamilton was there. Um, Hamilton goes to the left and Russell hasn't checked his mirrors, doesn't see him there and runs him almost off the track completely. And Hamilton gets quite severe front wing damage and... It was lucky it wasn't a, a bigger crash, really, but it was complete miscommunication. Really bizarre collision. And I'm surprised there's not been a bigger, like, fallout over it, I guess. I guess because it was so accidental, they're kind of just, like, going on with it and getting on with it themselves. But, yeah, what, what have you seen any inside of Mercedes stuff that I might not have seen? You, you know, I like the fact you believe I've got inside Mercedes <laughs> info. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you summed it up quite well. I, I think that George had bailed out on his lap already and was trying to go for another one, which is obviously why Hamilton was so close to him starting that, because I don't think he knew uh, that George had bailed out on the original attempt. But, yeah, very, very weird collision. Of course, that meant that George Russell was out down in P11 alongside Sergio Perez, mm. rather surprisingly. Nightmare for him. Uh, Joe Guan Yu and then both Alpha Towers there. Nick De Vries getting the better of Yuki Tsunoda on Saturday. Yeah, is that first time this season, second time this season? I was... feel like it's happened once before. Yeah, yeah, but solid. Ever since the, the big talk of De Vries getting dropped in like three races, he's, he's picked it up a little bit. So we can put some respect on his name. Well, um... I, I still stand by my statement that I know I made earlier on this year that actually the AlphaTauri car isn't as bad as it's everyone made as it out bad, to be. No. It was just Yuki was getting the results it should have been getting. Um, yeah, it's certainly but... comfortably in the midfield. Um, oh, easily, so. easily. You know, people going, oh, you know, it eats down there with the Williams. Well, you've kind of got it's Williams. Really not. You've kind of got Williams, and then five teams, then a bit of a gap, and then four teams. And I guess Alpine are kind of bridging that gap at the minute, anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very interesting one. I mean, to be honest, after all the drama throughout Q1 and Q2, I think we were all kind of expecting crazy scenes in Q3, weren't we? Uh, and then Max Verstappen goes and drops a 12-2 <laughs> instantly in Q3. You're like, well, that's over then. Yep. That one's gone. <laughs> I don't think anyone really was hoping for pole position outside of Verstappen. So, especially with Perez out, that's really the only, only uh, bit of only chance. logical explanation. But without any, you know, the fact that we didn't have Russell, we didn't have Perez, we didn't have Leclerc in Q3, you know, you thought, could, could Max do something? But again, no chance. No, no chance. No. Performing at an incredibly high level and yeah, just getting pole positions and race wins for fun. So, <laughs> Snap Paddy, that's all he's doing. Yeah, well, it happens to the best drivers, doesn't it? End up in the best car and they have a season where they just destroy everyone. So, there we go. Yeah, this is this much. is his 2020. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, to think now as well that we were saying literally two, three Grand Prix ago, you know, there, there was still that faint bit of hope. I was maybe... never saying that. <laughs> no, I know we weren't. I know both of us, you know, just kind of quashed that hope that anyone had. Um, but the fact that, you know, two Grand Prix ago, we were sort of talking about, you know, whether, you know, Perez can try and keep it going, you know, whether we could end up with a Rosberg miracle type season for Checo. Uh, and immediately it's gone. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Of course, Carlos Sainz, though. Very good result by him. P2 
uh, on the grid. I think that's Ferrari's, obviously, after Leclerc's pole. The only other time they've started on the front row uh, so far yeah. this season. Um, Lando Norris, P3, which did you hear his interview after qualifying, Jamie? did make me laugh. Uh, I did just see it, but I've completely forgotten what it was. So he basically said he wanted to try and hang on for dear life, and they went, what's P3? He went, no, for points. Um, <laughs> which, which, as we'll mention in a minute, d didn't happen either. Well, didn't um, last that long either. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Gasly uh, was originally fourth, but two pretty bad blockings going on in Q1 yeah. and Q2 then, and they even bumped way down the and order. And they've just given up on um, penalty points with Gasly as well. <laughs> apparently, they don't want Gasly to be banned, do they? Yeah, well, which they know that the penalty point system is stupid. So they're just Pretty like, much. okay, we'll just forget about it until we'll get them to 11, and then one penalty point away from a race ban, and we'll just stop giving them. So I, I, I mean, it does feel like, doesn't it, that it is completely dependent on the driver yeah. rather than anything yeah. else? Like, because Gasly hasn't got this image around him of being a dirty driver, despite the fact he probably would be now on about 15 penalty points, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they just don't want to ban him uh, for some reason. Uh, so yeah, Gasly had originally qualified fourth, was going to line up P10. Uh, Lewis, therefore, inherited fourth ahead of Stroll on Hulkenberg Alonso. And, it, you know, Stroll, first time he's had qualified Alonso this year after I put him on four watch last Yeah, we were, we were rinsing him less than a week ago. And here we are, Stroll, really solid weekend. And as we said, the best drivers come to the, uh, the four at Spain. Come to the four. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, but, um, absolutely man. I wonder if Alonso did... I don't know, lost some confidence. I don't think it's a, he would have lost that much confidence from the off in Q1, but he was never at it from that point onwards. Or kind of a weekend, the Aston Martin wasn't great, but to see didn't Alonso hard, to see Alonso <laughs> behind Stroll was a big surprise. And also, shout out to Hulkenberg, quality. Yes, yeah, Hulkenberg, another good qualifying effort, of course, meant that he got some big points on Sunday uh, as well. <laughs> if they could uh, make a car that looked after its tyres at all, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Williams as well all the time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Jamie, talk me, talk me through the race start then between the top two, Sainz and Verstappen, Duke and Air. I mean, we, we knew exactly what was going to happen, and, and it did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of an exact uh, replica of what 2021 Spanish Grand Prix with Hamilton. Not quite, not quite, because Verstappen yeah. was P2, wasn't he that day? But from pole position, Verstappen immediately covers off the inside. Their reaction time was basically the same. And the launch was pretty similar. Um, Science actually went for the soft tyres, so he was gambling on taking the lead, basically, which wouldn't have lasted long had he had it anyway. Um, but yeah, got a pretty similar launch, pretty similar acceleration, but obviously Science gets a little bit of a toe, the momentum grows, and he goes to the outside line as turn one. And you're all thinking, oh yeah, here, here we go, Verstappen's just going to run out of road, much like 2021. And lo and behold, pretty much, he just took way more momentum into the apex, much shorter line obviously and that meant that by the time Verstappen was at the point of running him out of road he was fully alert ahead and Sainz had no no choice but well, Sainz had already backed yeah, out already backed I think out. he's probably a better yeah. way of describing it yeah which is um, why it's different to something we'll get onto later I'm sure <laughs> it is why it's different to something we'll get onto later on but still it's so annoying isn't it it's just it's so yeah. annoying yeah it is a little bit annoying but then I guess had Sainz tried to keep the momentum around the outside and kept if he was able to keep his car alongside, because obviously Verstappen's line is so aggressive that he is he is banking on the fact that Science won't be able to go with him, which was true in this case. But had Science tried to keep it around the outside and had a, had a nose alongside at the point Verstappen was going to push him off, I would like to assume what the FA do then. <laughs> well, I mean, it would have just been probably you know if they if they come together at the right angle, it would have been both of them. Yeah, out of it would have been a big crash. Yeah, um, but. I mean, this is just what frustrates me. Because, again, this isn't a personal frustration with Max Verstappen. But he has completely caused this in the small <laughs> as he as well, though. It's well, just the fact that wheel to wheel You play the rules that you're happen. given. You play, you play I mean, to no, the No, totally. Yeah. Totally. I like it. Well, the thing is, he hasn't played to the rules he was given, though, was he, back in 2016? <laughs> no, not originally. Began. But the fact that they've moved the rules around it now to make it work... I mean, I desperately, if I was in any position of power within in within the FIA at the moment, you know, we've sorted out track limits now. You know, the drivers yeah. have learned. You get three strikes and you're out if you go outside the white lines. Simple, standard rule. What is wrong with telling them, if there's a car alongside you, you have to, uh, aim to a braking zone, you have to give them a car split. Especially yeah. as science was ahead. Because then, of course, psychologically for science, 
you know, he can go... Because, of course, he just went into that corner knowing, right, Max is going to run me out of road. I may as well back out now and protect myself from yeah. those behind. If he goes in there knowing that Max has to give him some room, otherwise he gets a penalty, surely you think that's... The home race is worth a punt trying to get around the outside of him at turn one, isn't it? But it just is pointless because you know it's not going to happen and nothing will happen from it. Yeah, but also I don't... Because uh, you, you look back at battles between the likes of like Alonso, Raikkonen, and Schumacher back in the day, I guess Hamilton as well to some extent. They only left space when they had to. It is a very tight marginal call, but it's kind of, in my head at least, it's kind of front wheel to rear wheel. And if you've only got a nose there, like what we saw with Norris and Hamilton at turn two on lap one, yes, yeah. if you've only got a nose there, you are asking for trouble. Like, yeah. you don't really completely, deserve space. Completely. But if it's front yeah, wheel no, and rear wheel are level, you deserve yeah. some space. And that's what I mean. I did mean, to be fair, front wheel to yeah. rear wheel in that instant. Not just that you try and get a tiny inch of your front wing yeah. down the inside and then and call for a penalty. To jump out of the way. Um, but it just desperately feels... And I, it, the problem is, well, it just doesn't feel like Formula 1 are ever going to look at it. But you Although just saying think, that, you know... We'll come on to it later, but like the the later penalty, I, I believe, anyway, is a, at least a step in the right direction. Hopefully, but they're just not consistent with it, are they? No, still, no. I think that's the problem. <laughs> um, but obviously, like we said, you know, Max held on to the lead down at the start. A little bit of Constantino up behind, as, as we mentioned from qualifying, completely wrecked Lando Norris this afternoon. I, I think you know he was wrong place at the wrong time to be completely it was honest. A, of course. It was a bit of a mis- misjudgment from him as well. Um, but unlucky. It unlucky. was unfortunate, but I think he will look back on that with a bit of regret because he, it was a little bit. Hindsight is a beautiful yeah, thing. I don't yeah. think he could expect Hamilton and Sainz to have to back off as much as they did. Mm, um, maybe not. But of course, yeah, that, that wrecked his afternoon, of course. Picked up front wing damage running into the back of Hamilton. Um, I, I did see a brilliant tweet uh, from someone going, Lewis Hamilton is the only driver in the world that doesn't get a puncture from that. It's contact. literally, he's so lucky. He's the luckiest <laughs> driver on the grid. <laughs> luckiest <laughs> driver on the grid. And I always, when anyone says that, just go back with Abu Dhabi 2021. Well, that was... Uh... He should have just, it's just covered true. the inside. It's just true. Yeah, uh, right, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I think the other one, of course, that happened down to Turbo was George Russell, of course, you know? Yeah, he, he decided he didn't bother with Turbo. Why did Alonso strap? <laughs> yeah, play Alonso to the rules that you're that. given. The white lines exactly. don't don't, uh, don't exist if you just go around the bollard. <laughs> well, like, like we said, Alonso does that. He's a wily old fox. He's yeah. clever. He knows yeah. the rules. Anyone else does that, and they're a cheat, apparently. Yeah, it's true. Um, so I, did you actually see that? I, I forgot to mention this to you last week after he spoke about Monaco. You know, after Alonso pit had made up like five seconds on Max Verstappen. Yeah, he jumped the chicane, didn't he? I he saw completely that. missed the chicane <laughs> but and he like, did didn't it, even slow it. He did it like slightly skillfully in that because it was raining, he just ac- like accidentally locked accidentally up. Accidentally locked up. And just yeah, straight yeah, lined straight it. Straight on. <laughs> yeah, he's, he knows what he's like doing. Like he did at Miami last year where he yeah. cut the chicane deliberately to get someone out of his DRS. And uh, um... Like, when his, his last race before his first retirement, when he went for fastest lap, just knowing yes, uh, in Abu Dhabi, yeah. when he just went for fastest lap by straight line in the turn 11 chicane. <laughs> Bizarre. But, uh, the, again, it's the fact that Alonso apparently just gets away with it all, yeah. uh, which always surprises me. Um, speaking of Alonso, though, his son had a very, very good start. Lap stroll up to P3, going around the outside of Hamilton through turn four. That was quite impressive. It was a good move. Stroll. Mm. Thought maybe, maybe something might happen from Maybe this, a little podium finish for Lance Stroll. Exactly, you know, we've, we've all wondered about it so far, but yeah, anyway. Um, I mean, it, it was just, a, it felt a bit like Miami, didn't it, though, Jamie? Yeah. Because there was a lot going on, but none of it was particularly exciting. No, <laughs> it was the, the just moves, a weird race. Yeah, the moves independently were, were nice to watch. I mean, they were very, like, especially you had what, Sonoda, Joe, and Hulkenberg just literally killing each other all the time. Um, they, I don't know how they ended up in the wrong order so often, but like, after every pit stop, it would basically Hulkenberg undercuts them both, and then Joe and Sonoda have a little battle, and they both get past Hulkenberg again. And <laughs> that was going on like all, like three times throughout the race, which yes, that yeah. was quite in- interesting to watch. But you kind of knew that the fastest car would end up in the right position at the end. So yeah. it was independently the roofs were nice, but because it was kind of for very minor finishes, obviously I cared a lot because Joe was on for his first points of the year. Or first proper points. Has he not anyway. scored? No, he got some in Melbourne, but uh, yeah, that was, was red set. flag related. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it was. There was a lot going on, and that's what makes a non-safety car race so good. I mean, I spoke about this in Baku after Baku. 
safety cars around pit windows absolutely destroy everything because yes. everyone's then got the same tires and there's no offset. Whereas yeah, you get exactly. a race like this where it's pure strategy is so offset between all the cars. There's a lot of mix up in order and everyone has to keep overtaking each other. So at least there's something to watch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the other good thing as well. That you know, uh, the fact that it was a proper two-stop strategy as oh, yeah. well yeah. made it so much better this weekend. I, I think there's hopefully quite a lot the Formula One can learn from this weekend, and the final chicane removal oh, really did quality. <laughs> it, you know, there were a lot of people going, "Oh, well, the overtakes were a bit too easy." I don't yeah, think they were. Yeah, sensibly they were. I thought they did pretty well with the DRS zone. Yeah, uh, that meant that. You pretty much always had a decent chance, but you still uh, but you, you couldn't. Know, if you messed up the final corner, you still wouldn't get. Like there. you weren't overtaking from nine tenths back unless it was like no, a Red Bull no. on a midfield car. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time as well, you'd be right down into the braking zone before yeah. you were completing the move as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, of course, there was just kind of a lot going on, but not a lot of it particularly exciting. So obviously, Lewis jumped stroll again for P three. Um, you obviously mentioned about how. Oh, excuse me, sorry, Hulk was um, jumping people. Um, but, of course, yeah, he kept getting jumped by Piastri every time I seem to look. Yeah, every time you look, he's just getting overtaken because he just undercut, like, three cars in the pit lane and then get yeah, overtaken by the them. <laughs> yeah, bizarre, bizarre. Um, but I guess, you know, the only the, the other really interesting, of course, like we said, you know, apart from George and Checo coming through, was, of course, that third Crusader. Uh, but this is Charles Leclerc in a Ferrari, of course, starting from the pit lane in the end. Um, uh, he was on the hearts, only driver to start the race on the hearts. Obviously, Lando joined him at the end of lap one, was setting fastest laps, and then Ferrari take him off the hearts on lap 17. Yeah. I saw in his uh, post match, <laughs> post race interview, post -match. that he, was, uh, he just didn't have any grip on them. So it wasn't just a dumb Ferrari thing, it was just he couldn't get the tyres switched on. So he didn't have decided any grip to cut. Anything this week. Yeah, didn't have much going for him at all, really. So unfortunate for him, but yeah, the Ferrari's pace in traffic. Like, you, you know, you see the Mercedes and the Red Bull were able to come through the traffic quite easily. I think Leclerc ends up behind Gasly, who was a bit out of position after lap one, and just could never really overtake him. So then was limited by the slightly slower Alpine, can't overtake the even slower Alfa Romeo or Williams or Alfa Tauri or whatever. Yeah. So just that Leclerc was just stuck, stuck in a DRS train. Yeah, but, but just see, and it, it honestly seems as well like Ferrari got set up the wrong way this weekend. And I think that's the thing, of course, when we've only got three hours of practice now. Um, and, you know, obviously a track that, of course, back in the day has always been really high downforce. But now no one quite knew what sort of wings and things like that to come with. Yeah. Uh, did make things a bit more interesting. Well, it is quite a flowing it? track now, isn't it? We said this on Friday. Very we? high speed in yeah. some places. Very, very good fun. Um, uh, yeah, like I said. It's all right, the front of the afternoon, though. I mean, we had Alonso. He had, oh, it amazed me that he only was able to get past Joe Wanyu on lap 21. Joe yeah. Wanyu was actually doing yeah, very Joe well. Yeah, Joe was doing really on. well at early space. And really well at all race, really, I thought. He had a quality race. So that was nice to watch. Um, yeah, the Valve, Aston Martin was just not really on the pace at all. Um, Aston Martin and Ferrari both struggled a lot. Yeah. It didn't suit their cars particularly. Um, which, which, of course, helped Mercedes with the B spec upgrades. Um, yeah. Because, to be fair, to Merck, throughout most of the afternoon. I mean, they were able to pretty much extend as far as Max was in the first stint, despite being on the softs. Of course, yeah. Max was covering them off. Um, but, you know, if the B-spec car means that they can afford to take some risks and potentially give Red Bull the headaches here and there, That's don't kind of what they're aiming for, isn't it? too much, can we? No, no, definitely not. And like we kind of said a couple of weeks ago when they bought the upgrades in, we said their aim would probably be to get into second place and be able yeah, to be annoyed. Be correctly. cemented there, kind of. Thing. Yeah, and that's uh, kind of just... seems like what they've done. Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously Hamilton obviously pit and then sighted pit a long time before him, so got the jump on him. Uh, lap twenty-eight. Perez was obviously just making up moves. I was quite surprised actually, to be honest. Obviously, George Russell had made so much more progress early on than Checo. Yeah, well, it's because he missed uh, turn one. Exactly. Because <laughs> he, no, he didn't make any places from that. I watched it back. Yeah, so on. He, he left the track and came back on the track at the same point. But then, because he'd carried so much more speed effectively by not bothering with turn two, he was able to overtake them into turn four and running outside okay. of turn three and four. So it didn't. I mean, he had a very good start anyway. But yeah. it, it helped. <laughs> it, it certainly yeah. helped. I'm never going to argue against that. 
Um, but yeah, Sainz was kind of like the only one that seemed to be able to stay near the Red Bulls and Mercedes. And of course, yeah, by lap 35, uh, George obviously jumped in as well. Um, lap 50-ish, obviously, we then had both Red Bulls and Mercs obviously back into the pit lane again, bought on a set of to go to the end of the Grand Prix. Uh, this was about the time Max was given his warning wasn't he, uh, for track limits, which, of course, he was very, very worried about uh, <laughs> actually to stay fast as lap. <laughs> yeah, he was like, what's my fastest time? And they told him and was like, you've only got one warning left before a penalty. And he was like, okay. And then sets fast as lap and then chills. <laughs> it's so Pretty similar uh, to, like, 2013 Vettel in the second half of the season. Yeah, I mean, just, this is absolutely yeah. Max's villain era. Yeah. Um, we're, we're all just here to put <laughs> here up to with love it. Those. Um, I mean, the, I mean, there was two more controversial things, wasn't there, Jamie? Later on in the day, mm-hmm. number one, Esteban Ocon trying to get revenge on Fernando Alonso. That that one did make me chuckle. Yeah, that was a bit like it was actually interesting. I watched the Channel Four highlights, um, and they said earlier in the race, when Alonso was overtaking somebody else. I can't remember who it was now, but they were like, the way Alonso sits in a slipstream is still so late kind of opens himself up to being weaved on last minute and they said it's exactly like what we saw in USA last year when he was trying for Alpine against Stroll where he hanged in the in the slipstream for so long that by the time he pulls out if Stroll decides to make the move he doesn't have time to react and that's why they crashed then and then that's almost why they crashed with Ocon because he was very entitled to stay in the slipstream as long as possible because back when Alonso started racing they had respect for each other so you can just go to the inside and trust that they won't make a late move but yeah not anymore really and it was almost a plane crash really but he kept it on the track and was able to get the move done so yeah very good stuff yeah. and a much better move than the one that's absolutely overhyped into next week which is uh vettel on on bottas in 2017 yes yeah exactly exactly <laughs> vettel just weaving around for no reason behind him yeah uh, afterwards <laughs> Um, I, it, it's ones like that as well, though, that I, I start to wonder whether they should be worth, even if it's just like a penalty point and no time penalty. Or a black and white flag is kind of designed for that, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. That kind of thing as well still frustrates me. Because um, obviously Ocon's done that. It hasn't been a crash, so he's got away with it. And he's still kind of, dangerous like, driving, yeah. Exactly. It shouldn't, not, that shouldn't be how it works. I think, at the end of the day. Um, but the other one, of course, the big controversy, uh, because apparently Yuki Tsunoda now is everyone's favourite driver this year, was that five-second penalty for the almost collision with Zhou Guan Yu. Yeah, yeah. And it, on first watch, I thought, that should be a penalty, but it probably won't be. Uh, and I was proven wrong, thankfully. So, yeah, I think the frustrating thing for a lot of people is the inconsistency. Because if you look at the rule book. That's absolutely a penalty. And lo and behold, it was. So the, I understand why people are annoyed because we see that perfect example, 2021 race start with Verstappen on Hamilton was basically, well, it was the same thing pretty much. Um, if any, if anything, more, it was probably actually. worse. Yeah. yeah. I'm, and I know that the FIA are more tentative on lap ones, um, which I don't know why they are, but they just always are. And they're also more... <laughs> They're more tentative when it's a driver racing for the win. Like, yeah, you compare it to Austria 2019 as well. That was kind of the beginning of this let them race mantra, which started because all the Ferrari fans were crying about Canada 2019. So, yeah, you you kind of... I, I completely get why people are annoyed because it's been happening generally Max Verstappen, but also a lot of drivers in the field where you get the inside line and it doesn't matter how much alongside they are, as long as they're not ahead of you. Uh, you can force them off, and it's not a penalty, which is dumb. Well, you you just carry a ridiculous amount of speed into the corner. That yeah. They they would run off the road anyway if they tried yeah. to hold it alongside you, kind of thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah. yeah, it's just so frustrating, isn't it? So I want my good old honest Formula One back. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want back when drivers respected each other and yeah, everything like that. I mean, this was the other thing as well, of course, that you know the controversy early in the weekend, wasn't it? Why haven't we just got a consistent stewarding body at this point? It's so true. It seems so ridiculous. Because the stewards are made up of four people. And is it two of them change every every race? Two or They're, three, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's insane. It's like, no wonder you can't get consistency when everyone's thought process is so different. Like, yeah, just, yeah. In a multi-billion dollar sport, I think that seems very archaic. I reckon they should just put it on Twitter and do a poll. 
Yeah, every single one should be done by a pot. I saw there was an F1 league that was going to try and do that. Every so decision bad. was going to be based off people on Twitter, which would have been hilarious. That'd be so bad. Um, Put it on r slash league racing stewards. That'd exactly. be great. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, I mean, yeah, Yuki, I felt he was unlucky to get that five-second penalty, but I also completely get it. And yeah. It did, of course, allow Joe Grand you to pick up some points as well. Yeah, I think they both deserve points. In that race, yeah. like, you know, if Joe finishes yeah. ninth and Sonoda's tenth, that's absolutely fine. But it was a shame for Sonoda that it was just a penalty because I think, you know, we've seen it before where you overtake off the track, for instance, you can give the place back. If he was, if the team told him like or told the FIA, sorry, okay, Sonoda drops back behind Joe, and then we'll call it yeah. evens, they probably would have gone yeah. with that, and then they both get a point. I both get. Yeah, but points. the FIA won't do that unless it's their bartering with Red Bull in um, <laughs> Saudi twenty twenty one. I mean, you look back on some of that, and what a, it like, it's insanity. no surprise that Abu Dhabi was such a disaster when this was going on, wasn't it? So, bit. so weird. Well, Brazil so 21 weird. was an absolute farce as well. <laughs> At this, that point, well, yeah, I was exactly. like, you know what, Max, you got to drive better than this, not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, just so, so weird. Um, but anyway, yeah, Max Verstappen, of course, wins uh, the Spanish Grand Prix, their uh, third win, sorry, uh, in Barcelona, for him second in a row. Lewis and George, though, on the podium. Perez mm. wasn't able to get between them by the end, so clearly... Uh, the B-spec car working quite well for Mercedes. And, yeah. of course, after the potential drama on Saturday, first non-Red Bull double podium of the season. Wow. Yeah, true. That's that's pretty big. And first one since Brazil for Mercedes? Well, first podium for George all year as well, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Um, Lewis with his second P2 of the year, mm. uh, which is quite impressive as well there. Perez, like we said, though, P4. Sainz, decent home race. Coming home in, obviously, in fifth. Yeah, They're struggling to beat out Alonso. Um, so your your win prediction there, Jamie, yeah. did, did not go up. <laughs> no, um, not so. Ocon, Joe, and Gasly. After of course Yuki Tsunoda's penalties there, uh, he came eleventh, less than a tenth ahead of Charles Leclerc, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but no points, so that's very Nil sad. Uh, that does welcome. bring us nicely onto uh, the quiz for this week, which is Matt's okay. turn to have a go, okay. uh, because we of course had uh, Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in the first and second places for the 35th time oh no one. so that makes them the, the most common uh one, one two, two ever is it, it but quite common i think that's the they're four clear of the next um so i've taken the top 10 most common and you have one to twos. name any of the drivers who contribute to the top 10 most common one two finishers in four right, okay history. how many there, are there, there are 14 so 14 yeah right, you've okay. got a minute and it's starting now max lewis yes nico rosberg yes valtteri bottas yes michael schumacher mm -hmm. rubens barrichello yep mika hakkinen no um and senna yep alan pross yep nigel mansell yep um i mean fangio no no um, David Coulthard? Yep. Sebastian Vettel? Yep. Uh, Alonso? Yep. You got two more. You got 25 um, seconds. Uh, Button? No. I said Rosberg, of course, yep. already, haven't I? Um, Kimmy? Yep. One more. One more. Oh. You got 10 seconds to go. 10 seconds for one more. One more. You'll kick yourself. I will kick myself. You're absolutely right. Um... <laughs> and that's oh, your time. Dear. Oh dear. Oh, no. Think who who finished? Uh, I think the combination. Did was... I see? I didn't say Bottas, did I? No, you said Bottas. Yeah. Oh, I said um, Bottas. That's all right. The combination that he's with is Sebastian Vettel. Who came? To... Mark. Yes, Mark Webber. Oh, I did. Oh, did think Mark Webber. <laughs> I thought now that can't be right. Yeah. Can't be right. So yeah, Damn. the tenth place was Alonso and Raikkonen have fifteen. So any more than fifteen gets you in the top ten. Fair play, fair play. But you've also then got to get your mate there as well yeah. with you. So I think Perez um, and Max are probably the, the, the closest realistic. Probably the, to the break sensible in. next one to get into. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the things obviously with actually it probably won't be. I mean, Kim is and Alonso was the last of the better part of ten years, wouldn't it? Which is quite mad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could have easily gone a lot longer had they both not just stopped trying after 2008. No, Alonso found a decent team to race for rather than <laughs> being a fraud all the time. Um, right. 
Predictions recap, though, Jamie? I, I feel I did quite well this week. I think you did. I Did you do that well? I know you got pole and win. I did better than you. Yeah. I got four points there, and I also said a Hamilton podium. Oh, really? Well, fair play. So, five points to me. I got um, two, three? Three, if three. I'm not mistaken. I mean, that's not bad. So that <laughs> Damage limitation after a bit of a ridiculous shout for the win, to be fair. So, it brings us back to... You're on 25, I'm on 20. That's so not, not over. that far behind. A long way to go. A long, long way to go. Uh, I mean, driver of the day, Jamie, before we, before we forget. Um... I mean, I want to give it to Joe, Joe Guan Yu, because he's my boy, and he got his best, I would say his best race in Formula 1 so far, so... Okay. Yeah. That's a bold claim. I think it probably Fair is. Play. I think, uh, on Sunday, oh, he's driver of the day, not driver of the weekend, uh, so I think George Russell is a fair shame. Yeah. Podium from outside the top 10 was pretty good going, uh, he's not the fastest car. And he started behind one of the cars like Perez and beat Perez no he didn't no, he, he did. was 11 Perez no, was 12 no, no, no. I thought Russell was 12 did he start behind him oh fair play then yeah. I thought he'd... yeah fair play yeah even yeah drive my driver of the day then really easy there you go Matt takes um, the British driver's shock yeah exactly <laughs> all that British bias coursing through my veins um, race racing though JB Barcelona new changes fastest version of the circuit we've ever yeah. seen uh, I, a pretty decent race I enjoyed it I can't remember what my sort of other ratings have been so far, but I'd give it a six and a half. I was going to say a seven, so I think we're, we're normally I rate these races slightly higher. Yeah, than you do, I'm a right? pessimist. <laughs> you are the pessimist of the podcast, but there we go then. I, I think we've rattled through everything we needed to, Jamie. I think we have. Um, like we said, uh, obviously we won't have to do a preview show this week because we have got a break before. I think we're back in Canada. Montreal aren't we, yeah. next, uh, which should be good fun. But thank you all so much as always for watching slash listening if you have enjoyed please do make sure and you like get yourself subscribed hit follow uh, on all those various social medias and we will be back then next week we don't quite know where genie will be just yet <laughs> but to preview the canadian grand prix